This presentation is called The Raw Truth About Selling Your Catalog. And in the presentation, I'm going to share six powerful secrets for getting the best deal possible. Now, Royalty Exchange has sold over $73 million worth of catalogs for hundreds of songwriters, artists, and producers over the last five years. And in this presentation, I'm going to share all of our secrets. You've probably heard about the boom in music catalog sales taking place across the music business over the last year or so. And maybe you've asked yourself if you should be doing the same. Or maybe you've decided that you do want to, but you just don't know how to get started. My name is Gary Young, and I'm the co-founder of Royalty Exchange. For the last five years, I've spent all day, every day, helping folks like you sell their catalog and get life-changing amounts of money. There are a lot of misconceptions and mistakes that I've seen over and over again that you can easily avoid. And there's also a few smart, proven strategies that will lead to success if you follow them. So I put together this presentation to help you make the right decision when it comes to selling your catalog and also outline a strategy that you can use with or without us to get the best deal. Because it, selling your catalog is a big deal, and it pays to get it right. This is especially important today, when the coronavirus crisis has upended all of the rules about music and money. Some of you may have to make tough decisions in the coming months, and I want to arm you with everything you need to weather this crisis and also emerge from it in better shape than before. Also, I'm going to answer your questions, too. So type in whatever questions you have into the chat box, and we'll cover them at the end. Now let's start with something that might surprise you. Selling your catalog might not be the right decision for you. Now that might seem like an odd thing for me to say because I'm in the business of doing catalog deals. That's all Royalty Exchange does. And if nobody sold their royalties, then we'd go out of business. But ultimately, we are in the business of helping artists gain financial freedom. And in many cases, selling your catalog isn't the best strategy for that goal. We wouldn't be in business as long as we have been or have as many repeat customers as we do if we encouraged bad financial decisions. Selling your catalog is probably going to get you a life-changing amount of money. And seeing a huge pile of cash hit your bank account is an amazing feeling. Overnight, you'll feel rich. But it can be a trap. Because nobody is going to buy your catalog expecting to lose money on the deal. I don't care if it's your publisher, your record label, a hedge fund, or a private investor. They're all buying it with the expectation that they'll make more money over time. They may pay you $50,000 today for your royalties, and expect to make $75,000 over the next 10 years. When you sell your catalog, you're making a trade, a large amount of money today for probably less money over the long haul. Now, often that's the right decision, but sometimes it's, it's not. If you don't have a plan for the money, then it's probably the wrong decision for you. That's our first secret. Secret number one, have a plan for the money. That warning aside, there are a lot of good reasons to sell your catalog. Here are a few of the common ones that we've seen across the nearly 900 transactions we've completed. Most commonly, artists want to raise money to invest in their career. We've worked with songwriters like Felix Snow, who wanted to make the transition from songwriter to performing artist. He'd written hit songs for artists like Selena Gomez and Katy Perry. But his dream was to become a performing artist himself, write his own music, and have total creative freedom. So he worked with us to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in his artist project. Now, he's got more than 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify and is absolutely crushing it as an independent artist. If you want to make the transition like Felix, selling your old songs that you wrote for other people can be a great way to finance your future artist career. We'd love to help you do it. Plus, by selling your songwriting catalog, you can stay independent 
and not have to go around hat in hand to try to secure a major label deal. We've heard from some artists that it serves as a useful creative turning point. Putting the music you wrote for others behind you can create the space you need to focus on the new music you make for yourself. Another good reason to sell your catalog is to invest in building or upgrading a home studio. Jimmy Iovine, the legendary record producer, founder of Beats, and former head of Apple Music, said it's the most important thing for an artist to do as soon as they get their first big check. Having your own studio allows you to skip paying expensive fees. It allows you to create whenever you feel like it, and it gives you more control over your sound. It's an investment that'll pay dividends for years to come. And although I don't think Jimmy thought about it at the time, in this world of social distancing and quarantine, having a home studio will allow you to keep making music, even if your normal studio is shut down. Investing in and betting on your future is a good reason to sell your royalties. Building or upgrading your studio is another. And it's not all about music. Many of our clients want to make a large investment outside of music. What do I mean by that? We've helped dozens of songwriters raise the money they need to buy their first home, or to invest in a rental property, or to build an app that can make them a fortune. Savvy songwriters and producers understand that if all their income is coming from music, that's risky. They want to diversify their sources of income to build real wealth. Like Jalil Beats, the producer behind many of Meek Mill's biggest hits, he raised a lot of money on royalty exchange to diversify and invest outside of music. He owns a couple of apartment buildings, a sneaker store, and many other businesses in his hometown of Chester, Pennsylvania. He knows he could keep making hits, but he wants to make money while he sleeps. And he's doing it. And his family definitely appreciates it. So if you're trying to diversify your income and build an empire, then selling part of your royalties to fund it can be a great idea. Finally, a lot of artists we work with sell their royalties to give themselves a financial cushion. You know, royalties go up and down, and it's stressful to live royalty check to royalty check. Sometimes even a small amount of money today can allow you to break that cycle and step on the gas. Either way, having an emergency fund so you never find yourself in a situation that you can't handle is tremendously liberating. Don't want to work with that artist that doesn't inspire you? If you have a cushion, you don't have to. Stuck at home and unable to tour because of a global pandemic? That's that's not so much of a sci-fi scenario anymore. And if you have an emergency cushion, you can weather storms like the coronavirus. Having cash on hand to deal with any unexpected blows puts you in a position of strength so you'll have the calm confidence of somebody that knows they can handle their situation. Having a war trust allows you to make moves that wouldn't be possible if you were scraping by on quarterly royalty checks. And then, of course, there's debt. Debt takes many forms, and almost all of it is bad. Maybe it's a advance with a really with really bad terms that you took out maybe it's credit card debt whatever the source debt is a weight around your neck that holds you back when your incoming royalties all go to paying back debt in small increments it's like running on a treadmill lots of action lots of effort but you're going nowhere Selling even a portion of your catalog to raise the amount of money you need to get rid of that debt will get you off that treadmill and you could start making forward progress again. Now, of course, those are just a few good reasons to sell your catalog and there's a bunch of others, but I think you get the idea. The biggest takeaway here is have a plan for the money. Don't just sell your catalog to sell it. So start thinking about it now and make your plan. Now, let's talk about the next five secrets to selling your catalog and getting an outrageously good deal. Secret number two, create competition. People have been selling catalogs for a long, long time. 
But the way it's been done traditionally has generally been a bad deal for the artist. Those deals have been done in back rooms where there's only one or two potential buyers that have the money. Nobody talks about it. Everybody signs NDAs so that the price and the terms are never discussed, except behind closed doors. That's a recipe for getting lowball offers and really crappy terms. You see, your catalog is unique. There aren't any others quite like it. It's like a Picasso painting. Imagine for a second you owned a Picasso that was worth gobs of money, and you want to sell it. Would you call up one or two people that bought art and ask them how much they'd pay for it? Heck no. That'd be crazy. If you did it, you'd definitely be leaving big bucks on the table. You see, buyers of unique assets like your catalog absolutely hate competition. They will do everything in their power to make themselves the only buyer. Why? Because they want you to think their offer is the best. But in reality, they're offering you as little as they think they can get away with. We flip that script at Royalty Exchange. We're a marketplace. We have more than 20,000 investors interested in buying your catalog. They're lining up and they're excited about the opportunity. And those investors have to compete against one another to see who's willing to pay the most. Plus, they compete in public so all the other investors can see who wants it and how much they're willing to pay. When you make buyers compete against each other, you win. And if you don't, you lose. It's as simple as that. Even if you don't want to work with us, I urge you to keep this in mind as you consider selling your catalog. If you don't have competition, you're probably going to get a bad deal. Now the next secret addresses a painfully common mistake that I see artists make all the time. Secret number three is hire a specialist. Imagine for a moment that you're going to get heart surgery next month. It's to repair a big problem with your ticker. And imagine you have the choice of two doctors. Doctor one does a few heart surgeries a year. He also has a family practice and spends a lot of time giving his patients antibiotics for strep throat. He even does house calls. Doctor two does four to five heart surgeries a week. That's all she does. She's a cardiothoracic surgeon. She spent four years after graduating medical school specializing in doing heart surgery. She spent long hours studying all the details and nuances of the human heart. She dreams about it. Who would you pick to do the surgery when the stakes are high? Doctor two, of course. You want the specialist. It seems obvious, no? But I see artists make this mistake all the time. You have a great lawyer. You have a great business manager. Maybe they both do a few catalog deals a year for their other clients. But your lawyer also negotiates your publishing deals, handles copyright disputes, figures out the right split sheets, and helps you get clearances for the samples you want to use. Your business manager maintains the books, pays your taxes, collects the money, reports on it to you, and pays your mortgage when you're on the road touring. I'm not, this is not a knock against them. They're valuable, and they're a key part of your team. But they're like Dr. One when it comes to catalog deals. They're generalists. And when it comes to a big deal like selling your catalog, you're going to want a specialist. I talk to a lot of great lawyers and business managers that do a handful of catalog deals a year. Four or five. We do at least five catalog deals a week. We don't do anything else. We've built a specialized machine and system for getting you the highest price possible for your catalog. And our business model means we don't make money unless you make money. In fact, the better deal you get, the better our business does. We're not only a specialist, but our incentives are aligned and we're in this together. Your lawyers, managers, and business managers can be great counselors for you. 
but they're not going to get the kind of results a specialist will get when it comes to doing catalog deals. And you're probably only going to do a few catalog deals in your life. And after more than 800 deals, we know the perils and pitfalls of selling your catalog. We know what songs investors will pay a fortune for, and we know what songs they won't be interested in. We know how to create the perfect environment so that you get the highest and best price possible. If you can't tell, I I feel quite strongly about this. Hire a specialist to sell your catalog. Even if it's not us, you're leaving money on the table otherwise. And of course, if you don't want to work with us, I have a few trusted attorneys that do specialize in catalog deals, and I'd be happy to introduce you to them if we're not the right fit. That's secret number three. Hire a specialist. Secret number four is the 80-20 rule. It doesn't have to be an all-or-nothing deal. Think about this. Most record labels make 80% of their money on the top 20% of artists in their roster. The same is true for catalogs. The most popular 20% of the songs in a catalog generate 80% of the catalog's earnings. And when most people start the sale process, they assume that they have to sell the whole thing, every song, cut or uncut, released or unreleased, because that's the way it was traditionally done. But That didn't make any sense to us when we started Royalty Exchange. All or nothing deals do you a big disservice. And they do it for a few reasons. One, they're asking you to sell every single thing that you've created, which can be emotionally painful. And two, like I said earlier, 80% of your catalog's value is probably in just a few songs. The all or nothing buyer is really only paying you for those hit songs that are making money. And they're getting all the other songs, including the potential future hits, for free. That's crazy. They want you, they demand that you give away all of that potential without taking any of the risk themselves. It it just just isn't right and that's why we do partial catalog deals all the time in fact we prefer them with us you could sell the royalties for just a handful of songs to get the money that you need based on your plan you can even sell the royalties for a few songs from one source of income for example let's say you have 20 songs in your catalog but four of them earn most of the money. Those songs earn public performance royalties from BMI and mechanical and sync income from Warner Chapel. Depending on your goals, needs, and plans, we could help you sell just the BMI public performance royalties for just those four songs, or just the Warner Chapel royalties, or both. And you'd keep the other 16 songs. If you want to get even more creative, we've done deals for 50% of the royalties from those four songs. That way, you could keep some of the income coming in and also get a big check that you could use to invest. This is how publishers, labels, and others in the music industry view their rosters and catalogs as assets that they can use in many creative ways. We allow you, the artist, to use the same strategies that have kept publishers and labels in business through the highs and lows of history. Now, this, I understand, can be a lot to think about. So, we put together a free service to help you figure out what the best deal is for you. We call it 80-20 catalog. We collect your statements, we identify the top 20% of your earning songs, and we'll show you what kind of money you can raise for just that small portion of your total catalog. Service is completely free. And at the end of this presentation, I'll show you how you can take advantage of it today. 
That's, that's the fourth secret for you. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing deal. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Secret number five is if you go in blind, you're going to get robbed. This is a big one. Before you even start talking to people that might want to buy your catalog or even those offering to lend on your catalog, you have to get an honest, fair appraisal of how much your catalog is worth and how much your catalog is currently earning. If you don't know either of those two things, you're probably going to get a bad deal. I've seen this so many times. A songwriter will have one buyer for their catalog that says it's worth a million dollars and another buyer that says it's worth two million dollars. It's, it's an insane difference. And even worse, if you're thinking about getting a third party advance, you'll talk to lenders who will analyze your catalog and tell you how much they think you'll earn in the next few years and offer you an advance based on that analysis. But if they're wrong and you earn less, you still owe them. They make the mistake, but you pay the price, literally. And if you haven't gotten a fair, unbiased appraisal, then your head's going to be spinning. It doesn't, it won't make any sense. You'll see offers that are wildly different. And you just won't have the proper foundation to judge the quality of the offers that you get for your catalog. And frankly, that's just the way the big buyers want it. If you don't know what your songs are worth, they could take advantage of you and not pay you the price you deserve. They want to keep it opaque. They want to be on the other side of a one-way mirror so they could see in, but you can't see out. They want to control the information so that they can win. Now, there are a few different ways you can get a catalog valuation. You can go to your business manager and ask them to put it together for you. That's going to cost you some money and will probably take a few weeks. You could also go to a catalog valuation specialist. There are a few out there. And boy, they're expensive. I've seen $20,000 invoices for a catalog valuation that takes a few hours to put together. But even though it takes just a few hours to put together, it'll probably take you a month to get the numbers back. I've also seen it take even longer than that. We do things a little differently. First, we provide our valuations for free. They take less than a week to get done. And they're based on more than 800 deals we've completed and our analysis of more than 200,000 individual songs that make tens of millions of dollars a year. We provide free valuations because Frankly, a better informed artist is a better customer for us. Because we're specialists, we built software that allows us to perform this analysis fast and for free so we don't have to charge you. And of course, we hope that you decide to sell your catalog with us, but you're under no obligation to. Here's how we do it. First, we gather up your royalty statements. We identify your top earning songs sources, and types of income. Then we prepare an appraisal for you and talk you through the whole thing. We'll show you what's working with your catalog, what's not working about your catalog, and we'll give you our expert valuation. We'll do that for both your entire catalog and we'll provide you with a custom 80-20 valuation as well. And then of course, We'll present the numbers to you and answer all your questions. And unlike those who want to buy your catalog or lend against your royalties, we're not negotiating against you. With others, for them to do well, you need to do worse. We're the opposite. Right? The better you do, the better we do. So instead of being on the other side of the table negotiating against you, we're on your side of the table working for you. And frankly, we believe that the more songwriters, producers, and artists that understand the value of their work, the better their lives will be, which will make the community better and will help everybody achieve their goals. And you know, at the end of this presentation, I'll, I'll show you how you can get that catalog analysis and valuation done for free today. As I've said before, right, we would be delighted to work with you, but either way, 
please make sure you understand how much your catalog is worth before you start the process of selling it. That's secret number five. And now we come to the last and most powerful secret of all. It's all about the process. If you're serious about raising a lot of money from your back catalog, you must run a process for selling it. If you don't run your own process, you're going to be in somebody else's, and that's no good. It's about control. And a good process for selling a catalog has two main things. Number one, rules for bidding. Number two, a deadline. It seems really basic, I know. But you'd be shocked at how few artists and their teams follow any process for selling a catalog. And a well-run process is the difference between a great deal and a really crappy one. I've seen it time and time again. Here's how catalogs are traditionally sold. You tell your lawyer or manager or business manager that you want to sell your catalog. They open up their Rolodex and send an email to the same five or six buyers that they know, if they even know any buyers. If they don't, they start reaching out to their network and asking them, who would buy this? Right? And then when they get in touch with some of these buyers, they say, my client is exploring a catalog sale. Here's what they've written. Are you interested? And then one or two of those buyers get back to them in a week or two weeks and say, yeah, we're interested. Then while your team is waiting for the buyers to get back to them, they gather up your statements and put together an informational packet about your catalog. They send it out to the buyers that are interested. The buyers look at it and go over your catalog with a fine-tooth comb. And sometimes it takes buyers a few weeks or a month or two to complete their analysis because they're probably looking at other deals also. Then... Of the two buyers that said they were interested, maybe one gets back to them and says, we want to go deeper. Here are our questions. And then your team scrambles to answer their questions. Hopefully your people have done this enough where they can get the buyer answers within a week or two. But of course, your team is probably working on other things. So maybe it takes two or three weeks. Then when the buyer gets those answers, almost invariably there's another set of questions and even more back and forth if your lawyer answers those questions to the potential buyer's satisfaction then the next step is a letter of intent a letter of intent basically says we intend to buy your catalog for this price under these conditions all good letters of intent have an exclusivity clause which says that once you sign you can't talk to anybody else. So then they have you locked down. And that might seem okay to you, but there's one big problem here. The letter of intent binds you, but it doesn't bind the buyer. So they can twiddle their thumbs and keep you waiting for months while they take their sweet time doing their due diligence. And you're trapped. And then what happens? The tough questions start rolling in. And if this buyer who you're stuck with for 90 days or more finds anything they don't like, then the price they agreed to starts dropping. That's the thing about the letter of intent. It locks you up, but it doesn't commit the buyer to paying the price on the document. And then what happens? These buyers know that they have you cornered and they can do whatever they want with you. And you can't do a thing about it. Time passes. You get frustrated. Of course, at the beginning of the process, everybody said it would take just a few weeks or a month or two. But now you're in month four of the process, and they're using time as a weapon against you. I've seen big buyers send letters of intent for $6 million for a catalog. Then those buyers dump the poor songwriter into a woodcutter of diligence questions and by the end of the buyer's process you're grateful to sell your catalog for two million bucks just to be done with it a 66 percent reduction from the price they lured you in with it's bullshit 
but it's the natural effect of letting somebody else run their process on you. You have to run your own process or else you're going to get steamrolled into doing a bad deal. Here's, here's how you should think about your process. Step one, figure out how much money you want to raise to accomplish your goals. Step two, get a valuation of your catalog. Adjust your goals if necessary. Step three, identify the most valuable parts of your catalog that will get you to your goals. Step four, get your catalog in front of as many buyers as possible. Step five, deter define the terms of the sale. Step six, give those buyers a deadline. Tell them no offers will be considered after this date. If you don't give them a deadline, they'll drag the process out and use time as a weapon. Step seven, make them compete at auction to see who's willing to pay you the most money for the part of your catalog that you want to sell. Step eight, after you've determined a winner, impose a deadline on when the winner has to pay. I've seen people agree on price and then the buyer drags their feet and people have to wait weeks and months to get paid. Step nine, collect your money, accomplish your goals, and get back to kicking ass and making great art. Now you see how different that process is from the haphazard process that songwriters and their teams normally run. That nine step process is exactly what we do. We execute it hand in hand with you to ensure that you get the absolute best results possible. And remember, the better you do, the better we do. It takes a lot of work to run a process like this and it requires discipline, commitment, and creativity. But it's all we do. You may not want your team who sell a handful of catalogs a year running some haphazard process for you on one of the biggest deals of your life. There's frankly there's just too much at stake. Again, right? I'm not trying to persuade you to work with us with this presentation. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge and wisdom to help you succeed should you decide the time is right to sell your catalog or part of your catalog. And you know that is how we've done $73 million worth of deals for songwriters like you. First, you know, we have a conversation about your goals, plans, and desires. We get to know you better so that we can help you. Right? Next, we gather up all your royalty statements and we analyze them. After that, we put together two valuations for you. First, a full catalog valuation so you understand the full scope of what you could get. And then an 80-20 catalog valuation so you can identify the most valuable parts of your catalog. And if the numbers on the deal make sense to you and help you get closer to your goals, then we talk about how we'll get the deal done. After that, we put together a simple agreement that gives us the right to sell whatever portion of your catalog makes sense to you. After you sign that, we complete the due diligence process before anything goes live on our site. And then after that's done, we list your catalog on our marketplace and more than 20,000 buyers will compete to see who's willing to pay you the most. After the auction ends, we collect the money from the winning bidder and we complete the royalty transfer process for you. Now. I know that seems like a lot of steps, but we have it down to a science. Instead of taking months to complete the deal from start to finish, it almost always takes us less than 30 days. For some royalty streams, we can complete the deal in a week. That's the power of sp focus and specialization. Every buyer out there is going to try to run their process on you. Don't let it happen. It's You're not going to win playing somebody else's game. Now those are the six secrets that we've learned after completing hundreds of catalog deals for more than $73 million. Let's recap. 
Have a plan for the money. Think it through and don't sell your catalog if you don't have a plan. Number two, create competition. You're going to get the best deal by having buyers fight over you. Three, hire a specialist. Don't do one of the biggest deals of your life with a part-time deal maker working on your behalf. Four, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing deal. Don't sell your entire catalog if you don't need to. Five, understand the value of your catalog before you start the process. If you go in blind, you're going to get robbed. Six, run a process, set rules, have a deadline. You won't win playing somebody else's game. If you're serious about selling, now, for everyone who attends this webinar, we'll put together a free valuation just for you. Before I get to the questions, click the link you see on the screen to start the process. Keep in mind that we receive dozens of requests each week, so we'll get to yours in the order that we receive it. So it's best to start that process and fill out that form right now.